Right, uh, in this video we're going to uh, study the straight line. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at uh, straight line segments. Now, um, there are many uh, uh, real-life applications uh, where uh, the straight line um, is useful. So. Uh, they are uh, numerous applications um, of uh, the straight line. Um, we are just going to mention one example here. Um, so, in uh, the case of uh, connecting two points um, so the shortest distance uh, between any two points is a straight line uh, so uh, since the shortest uh, uh, distance between any two points uh, is a straight line um, then what it means is that uh, the most cost-effective uh, way uh, of um, connecting any two stations um, the most cost-effective uh, way of connecting any two stations um, by whether it's cable uh, whether it's fence uh, whether it's a road okay uh, is going to be via a straight line okay so is in a straight line so that is just one um, uh, example of an uh, application of the straight line now uh, in this video we're going to focus on uh, straight line segments um, so a straight line segment is uh, a uh, straight line of finite length so it's going to start at some point and uh, the other end is going to be at uh, yet another point um, the thing we are going to want to be able to do uh, by the end of this video uh, is to find one we want to find the length uh, of a straight line segment so we want to find the length we also want to find the gradient of a straight line segment we want to find the inclination angle um, and then we're also going to be interested in finding the coordinates of the midpoint right so let's uh, start our analysis then so imagine we have uh, a straight line uh, in the coordinates plane uh, so imagine we've got a straight line starting from this point which we're going to call a 
uh, suppose the coordinates of A are x1, y1, and uh, suppose the coordinates of B are x2, y2. Um, so the first thing we're going to work out is uh, the uh, length of uh, this uh, straight line segment. So perhaps, uh, let me just uh, make this... Uh, just uh, going to scale it down. Uh, <clears throat> so there is our coordinate axis. So we've got x and y this side. And uh, then suppose this is our straight line. So B has got coordinates x2, y2. A has got coordinates x1, y1. Okay, um, what I want to do is I'm going to resolve this into horizontal and uh, vertical distances, which means that it's going to be a right angle. Um, just for purposes of this, let's call that point uh, C. Um, so what we're going to be interested in is uh, the length of this horizontal line and the length of this uh, vertical line there. Okay, so this is uh, x1, y1. Okay, um, just for a moment. I'm going to use uh, some actual numbers on these points A and B to demonstrate a point and then we'll go back to x1 and uh, x1, y1 and x2, y2. So suppose this point B is uh, um, 7, 9. Suppose this point A is uh, 2 minus 3. Okay. Um, so, which means the dist horizontal distance from here to here is just going to be given by the difference from the two x coordinates. So, if uh, the x coordinate here, the x coordinate there is 2, and the other x coordinate is uh, 7, um, then what it means. Okay, the x coordinate here is 2, the x coordinate here is 7, then this distance is going to be 5. How do we get the 5? We say 7 minus 2. Then if uh, the vertical dist um, coordinate here is minus 3, and the vertical coordinate there is uh, uh, 9, then this distance here is going to be 12. Again, we get that by saying 9 minus negative 3. Okay, but we don't want to work in terms of uh, these numbers want to work in terms of the general coordinates so that whatever formulas we get we can apply them to any two points so in terms of x1 and x2 uh, this horizontal distance then is going to be x2 minus x1 so that's going to be a c and uh, this vertical distance be y2 minus y1. Then we're going to apply Pythagoras to this triangle. Okay, so we are going to say uh, by uh, Pythagoras uh, theorem uh, we must have that uh, a b squared which is the hypotenuse is a c squared plus b c squared 
Okay, so we're saying uh, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two longer sides. So AB squared, AC squared plus BC squared. But um, AC is X2 minus X1 squared. BC is Y2 minus Y1 squared. Um, so then, this is telling us that uh, AB must be equal to the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Um, and so that is going to be the formula for the length of the straight line uh, AB. Okay. So let's call this formula number one. Okay. Then the gradient uh, of AB, gradient is the same as the slope, uh, is given by the vertical, uh, it's given by the vertical distance here divided by the horizontal distance okay so the gradient we denoted m so i'm going to denote it m a b it's going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay now um so the value of m is going to take uh, different uh, signs um, for different lines. So m can be positive, m can be negative, uh, m can be zero, and m can be infinity, okay? Uh, so uh, let's just say for uh, a different uh, values of M the orientation of the line uh, changes okay uh, orientation of the line varies uh, so let's look at uh, some of those four cases so if M is equal to zero. So if M is equal to zero, it means the, the, the line has got no gradient. So the line is horizontal. Okay. Um, so if the line is horizontal, it's uh, going to look uh, something like that. Okay, so then the gradient is uh, zero, or there is no gradient. Uh, if M is positive, uh, then we say the line is upsloping, is upsloping. Um, Sloping is a bit like a forward slash, uh, so like a uh, forward um, slash. So the, the line is going to look something like that. Uh, all these are positive gradient lines. Okay. So that's a, a uh, M being positive. Then if M is negative, uh, the line uh, is uh, down sloping. So if the line is down sloping 
it's a, a bit like a backslash uh, a back uh, slash so in this case the orientation of the function is going to be like that so any of those lines um, negative gradient lines the last option uh, uh, m can be infinite uh, if m is infinite the line is vertical okay so if a line is vertical its orientation is going to be something like that okay so that covers the um the gradient of the line so that means uh this sketch of a line that we have for instance here is a positive gradient line this line here the x-axis has got zero gradient this line here has got uh, infinite gradient all right uh, we're going to look at some examples here then the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the uh, angle of inclination so the angle of inclination is the angle by which our straight line um, tilts from the horizontal okay um, so in our case the horizontal is the x-axis or any other line that is parallel to the x-axis so that is our horizontal so the angle by which our line tilts uh, from the x-axis is called the inclination angle and that angle um, as we're going to see um, can be positive or negative because we um, we always express it um, well actually uh, it's going to be positive but we'll see that uh, yeah um sometime you get a negative from the calculator so uh let's just uh, talk about the inclination angle so uh inclination angle so um this is the counterclockwise um Uh, angle uh, that the line uh, makes with the x-axis uh, makes uh, with the x-axis okay um, so we want to call it theta so theta is going to be between 0 and 180 going to be between 0 and 180 degrees okay um, <clears throat> so if uh, this is the horizontal uh, this is our line so that is going to be our inclination angle uh, if this is our line, then that is going to be the inclination angle there. So as you can see, can vary from 0 to 180. Now, um, from our diagram here, uh, our inclination angle is going to be given by that angle there. So by the property of a straight line, it's obviously the same angle as that one. But just for now, we're going to focus on this one. Now, the formula that relates uh, 
theta, the opposite and the adjacent, is the formula that says the opposite uh, over the adjacent is equal to tangent theta. But uh, this group of terms we already have here. Okay. So um, when it comes to the inclination angle, we're just going to write. Uh, so we have. Um, so remember the gradient is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So this is just equal to tangent theta. Um, and then from this, we can get theta. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of the gradient for our straight line. So we've got a few formulas now. Let's number them. That was the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. Uh, one more, and then we're going to get on with uh, some examples. Then the last thing we're going to do is the midpoint of the uh, straight line segment AB. So the coordinates of the midpoint uh, of AB um, okay so I'm going to go back to this the midpoint here is going to be given by this point where this is the midpoint of AC and that is the midpoint of BC well if this is x1 and this is x2, then the midpoint of x1 and x2 is going to be the average of their sum. Same thing with the y is going to be y2 plus y1 all over 2. So that's going to be the coordinates of the midpoint. So uh, m is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So that is going to be the midpoint. All right. Now let's uh, look at some examples. All right. Uh, in these examples, uh, we are going to be given uh, a straight line segment uh, AB. Um, we're going to want to find the length of AB, the gradient of AB, the angle of inclination, and the coordinates of the midpoint. Uh, so here are the straight line segments. Now, just uh, one uh, useful um, hint before we start uh, with this is that uh, you must always make a sketch. Always make a sketch. Uh, if you make a sketch, uh, then the chances of uh, going wrong are very much minimized. All right, so example A, we have got A is uh, 3, 2. B is... Uh, 718. So I'm going to make a quick uh, sketch of what's going on here. So both points are in the first quadrant. Um, so I'm going to put A here, 3, 2. Then B, look at this one, it's got coordinate x coordinate 3, this one x coordinate 7. So B must be this side of A. Y coordinate is 2 here. Y coordinate is 18 there, so B must be this side, so that means B must be somewhere this side. 
uh, to the right and upwards of A718. So this is gauge, but uh, those are just other things that are going to help us uh, determine the orientation. Then straight away you can see that uh, this line is upsloping. So in terms of the gradient, we expect to get uh, a gradient uh, that is positive. So we're going to start with uh, the... Um, we're going to start with uh, the uh, the length. So it's going to be x2 minus x1, 7 minus 3, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, 18, minus 2, all squared. Uh, 7 minus 3 is 4, uh, 18 minus 2 is 16. So we're going to have a square root of... Uh, 4 squared plus 16 squared. Let's get our calculator. So it's going to be a square root of uh, 4 squared. 4 squared uh, plus 16 squared. Um, so this calculator is telling us that is 4 square root 17. Uh, which is fine, uh, we want it in decimal, so in decimal it's 16.49, uh, we want to decimal places 16.49, um, so that is the length of AB, then next we're going to go to the gradient of AB, so MAB, we're going to do y2 minus y1, 18 minus 2 divided by 7 minus 3. 18 minus 2 is 16. 7 minus 3 is 4. So the gradient is 4 and indeed is, pos is positive, which is agreeing with uh, the fact that our sketch has got an upsloping line. Then next we need the angle of inclination. So that's going to be this angle there, theta. We said theta is the inverse tangent of M. So it's just going to be the inverse tangent of 4. Again, we get our calculator. Um, so we do inverse tangent or uh, inverse tangent of 4. We've got to make sure that our calculator is in the degrees mode. So that was not in degrees, it's now in degrees. So inverse tangent uh, of 4. And that gives us 75.96. So that's going to be our inclination angle. The last thing we need to do is to find the midpoint. So the midpoint, which is at the uh, x coordinates divided by 2, we add the y coordinates divided by 2. 7 plus 3 is 10. Divided by 2 is 5, 18 plus 2 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. So that means the midpoint of AB is going to be 5, 10. Right, then we go to the next question. In B, we have got uh, minus 3, minus 4, 1, 4. Minus 3, minus 4, 1, 4. Um, this point is uh, in uh, quadrant 1. This point is in quadrant 3. So let's do a sketch. So in that case, it's uh, pretty easy to do the sketch. So we're just going to put a anyway here. In the third quadrant and uh, B 
be anywhere here in the first quadrant and that is suggesting that uh, our straight line again is going to be upsloping okay then the length AB is going to be the square root of 1 minus negative 3 squared plus 4 minus negative 4 squared okay 1 minus negative 3 is the same as 1 plus 3 4 minus negative 4 is the same as 4 plus 4 so we have got 4 squared plus 8 squared 4 squared is uh, 16, 8 squared is uh, 64, so this is uh, square root 80, uh, and then correct to two decimal places, so square root 80 is equal to uh, 8.94. So 8.94 is the length of our straight line segment. Then we're going to go and do the uh, gradient. So the gradient MAB is going to be the Y2 minus Y1. So 4 minus negative 4, and then 1 minus negative 3. We already said this is 4 plus 4, this is 1 plus 3. So this is 8 over 4. So this gradient is going to be 2, which uh, of course is negative as we anticipate, sorry, it's positive as we anticipated then the um, inclination angle which in our diagram is going to be this angle here so theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 2 which uh, just uh, simply punch in the calculator so inverse tangent 2 63.2 for three degrees so that's going to be 63.43 degrees and then lastly the midpoint coordinates um, will be minus three plus one all over two minus four plus four all over two Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2, over 2 is minus 1, minus 4 plus 4 is 0, uh, so the coordinates will be negative 1, 0. Okay, let's go to uh, example number C now. In example number C, we have got minus 3, 2. 5 minus 8 uh, so minus 3 2 5 minus 8 minus 3 2 5 minus 8 and then again in terms of our sketch um, this point is in quadrant number two this point is in quadrant number four so our straight line is going to look something like this okay so a is minus three two b is a uh, five minus eight all right uh, then the length of a b it's going to be the square root of, um, so we're going to do 5 minus negative 3 
squared plus minus 8 minus 2 squared 5 minus negative 3 is 5 plus 3 uh, that one is just going to be negative 10 so this is the square root of uh, 8 squared plus 10 squared uh, 8 squared is 64 so this is going to be the square root of 164 punching this in the calculator 164 gives us that in decimal it's 12.81 so 12.81 is the length of uh, that uh, straight line then now we come to the gradient from our sketch we expect the gradient to be negative because this line is down sloping it's a bit like a backslash so uh, we are going to do uh, mind you we can either do this minus this but if we do this minus this for y we must do the same order for x or we can do this minus this and then we must do the same order for x this time I'm going to do this minus that so it's going to be 2 minus negative 8 and then negative 3 minus 5 uh, 2 minus negative 8 is 2 plus 8 this is negative 8 so this is going to be 10 over negative 8 common factor is 2 so that's going to be negative 5 over 4 is our gradient then theta uh, going to be the inverse tangent of negative 5 over 4 um, so if we punch this in the calculator inverse tangent uh, negative 5 over 4 divided by 4 we get negative 51 which is a uh, an acute angle so this is telling us that the angle we are having is this one here okay 0.34 the reason why it's negative is because uh, when it comes to trigonometry uh, clockwise is negative counterclockwise is positive so the reason why this is negative is because from the horizontal to the straight line we're going that way the angle we're looking for is this one okay and so that angle we can get by taking this away from 180 so we're going to do 180 minus 51.34 so if we go back here um, we're just going to say the answer plus 180 so it's going to be 128.66 it's going to be our inclination angle this time which is this one all right okay um what we're going to do now is uh, give you uh, a few minutes to have a go at the last three uh, straight line segments here so um just pause the video have a go at these and then when you continue the video then you're going to find our solutions to compare with your working all right uh, we're hoping now that you have had a go at uh, these uh, exercises examples we're now going to scroll down to our answers um, so for d we have got uh, uh, a is 9 minus 4 uh, b is uh, minus 1 minus 10 
This one is in quadrant number four. This one is in quadrant number uh, three. The key coordinates are this one. So this one is down minus four. Whereas this one is down minus 10. So B is lower than A. So the line is not going to be like that. But the line is going to be like that. So from uh, this gauge, the line is uh, upsloping. So we expect the gradient to be positive. Then if we plug in the formula for the uh, distance, we find uh, 11.66. The uh, gradient, as uh, we have anticipated, is a positive 315. Then the uh, angle of inclination is 30.96. The midpoint is 4 minus 7. For E, we've got minus 2, set minus 7, and 20 minus 7. These ones, because the Y coordinate is the same, these are actually on a horizontal line. Okay. Because remember here, we used these to determine whether this point is above this one or below. But... Uh, in this case, those two numbers are the same. So this is in quadrant number three, is quadrant number four, but uh, the y coordinates are the same, so there's a horizontal line. So the calculations are gonna be straightforward, really. The distance is just gonna be this one minus this one, which is 22, because these ones are the same. Then the um, gradient is zero, because they say the horizontal line has got no gradient. And uh, hence the angle of inclination is zero as well. The midpoint is going to be nine minus seven. In this case, zero minus six is on the vertical axis. Minus five four is in quadrant number two. So our line is down sloping. Uh, the gradient uh, sort of agrees with uh, that assertion here. And so for the um, for the inclination angle, we are not going to have to uh, add this to 180. So when you work this out, you get a negative angle of 63. So this should be negative there. Okay, then our inclination angle works out to 116.57. The midpoint works out to minus 5 halves minus 1 and the length is 11.18 all right uh, thanks for watching this hopefully it's been useful uh, please do subscribe um, so that you can get notified of uh, future material that we post on this channel thank you